السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To start a new series of upper limb lectures I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the anatomy of the brachial plexus I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt In this presentation, I'm gonna cover the following objectives The definition of the brachial plexus Its formation Branches and injuries at the root of the upper and lower limbs, we can see that the spinal nerves exchange their fibers and form a network. From this network, the nerves of the limb arise. So at the root of the upper limb, we have what's called the brachial plexus. And we should know that the word brachial means arm and plexus means network. So brachial plexus is the plexus or the network that gives rise to the nerves that will supply the upper limb. While at the root of the lower limb, the lumbar nerves and the sacral nerves together form the lumbosacral plexus that will give rise to the nerves that will supply the lower limb. These are the spinal cervical nerves. This is C5, C6, C7, C8 and the first thoracic nerve. The fifth and sixth cervical nerves will unite together and form the upper trunk of the brachial plexus, while C7 continue as middle trunk of the brachial plexus. C8 and T1 will form the lower trunk of the brachial plexus. So here we can see the upper trunk, the middle trunk, and the lower trunks of the brachial plexus. Each trunk will split into two divisions, anterior division and posterior divisions. The anterior division of the upper and the middle trunks will form the lateral cord of the brachial plexus, while the anterior division of the lower trunk will form the medial cord of the brachial plexus while the posterior divisions of all trunks will form the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. So now I end up with three cords, medial cord, lateral cord, and posterior cords. Where we can find these different parts of the brachial plexus, so you can see that there is supraclavicular part of the brachial plexus. Behind the clavicle, there is the retro clavicular part of the brachial plexus and below the clavicle there is the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus. The supraclavicular part includes the roots and trunks of the brachial plexus while the retroclavicular part includes the division of the brachial plexus and the infraclavicular part includes the cords and the branches of the brachial plexus. Here we can see the branches of the brachial plexus. From the roots we have the dorsal scapular nerve which arises from C5 and we have the long thoracic nerve which also arises from the roots from C5, 6 and 7. From the upper trunk we have two nerves. Nerve 2 subclavius to supply the subclavius muscle and the other one is suprascabular nerve. If we want to see these muscles, if we remove the trapezius and the latissimus dorsi to see the deeper layer, here we have the levator scabuli, the rhomboides minor, and the rhomboides major. All are supplied by the dorsal scabular nerve from C5. But here we can see the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus muscles supplied by the suprascabular nerve from the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. Here we can see the small subclavius muscle supplied by nerve to subclavius from the upper trunk. And we also can see the long thoracic nerve which extends on the side wall of the chest to supply the serratus anterior muscle. 
For the branches of the cord of the brachial plexus, here is the lateral cord and it has three branches, the musculocutaneous nerve. It also gives the lateral pectoral nerve which supplies the pectoralis minor and major muscles and the lateral root of the median nerve. The medial cord of the brachial plexus gives five branches. The biggest one is the ulnar nerve, the medial root of the median nerve, the medial pectoral nerve, and two cutaneous branches, the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. The posterior cord of the brachial plexus gives two big branches, the axillary nerve and the radial nerve. It also gives the upper and lower subscapular nerves and the thoracodorsal nerve. So the cords of the brachial plexus will give rise to five main branches that will be the source of the nerve supply of the whole upper limb. This is the musculocutaneous nerve, the median nerve, the ulnar nerve, the axillary and the radial nerve. And these two nerves go backward to supply the muscles at the back of the upper limb. So we can see them wrap around the back of the humerus. And to summarize what I have just said, the brachial plexus is divided into the following parts. We have roots, trunks, divisions, and cords. The roots are made by the cervical nerves number 5, 6, 7, 8, and T1. There may also be small contribution from the fourth cervical nerve or the second thoracic nerve. The roots of the fifth and sixth cervical nerves unite together and form the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. The root of C7 will form the middle trunk of the brachial plexus. The eighth cervical nerve and the first thoracic nerve unite together to form the lower trunk of the brachial plexus. Each trunk now will divide into two divisions, anterior division and posterior division. All the three posterior divisions will unite together to form the posterior cord of the brachial plexus while the anterior division of the upper and the middle trunk will form the lateral cord of the brachial plexus and the anterior division of the lower trunk will form the medial cord of the brachial plexus. Now we move to the branches. From C5 we have the dorsal scapular nerve. From C5, 6 and 7 we have the long thoracic nerve. From the upper trunk, we have two branches, nerve two subclavius and suprascapular nerve. From the posterior cord of the brachial plexus, we have five branches. The two main ones are the axillary and the radial nerve, which is considered to be the continuation of the posterior cord itself. And we also have the thoracodorsal nerve, lower and upper subscapular nerves. The lateral cord of the brachial plexus will give the main branch, which is the musculocutaneous nerve, and it will also give the lateral pectoral nerve and the lateral root of median nerve. The medial cord of the brachial plexus will give mainly the ulnar nerve, the medial pectoral nerve, the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and the forearm, and the medial root of median nerve. The lateral root and the medial root will form together the median nerve. Again, the five main branches of the cord of the brachial plexus that will supply the muscles of the upper limb will be the ulnar nerve, the median nerve, the radial nerve, the axillary nerve, and the musculocutaneous nerve. Regarding the injuries of the brachial plexus, it could happen because of two factors either traction injury as in Perth injury or a motorcycle accident or due to compression of the brachial plexus by a cervical rib or by stab wounds. In upper trunk lesion this means that there is injury for the 
fifth and sixth cervical roots, we have what's called herbis palsy. The patient cannot elevate his shoulder, flex his elbow, or turn his arm out. And the deformity will be like this. The arm is adducted, extended, and medially rotated, and the wrist is flexed. In lower trunk lesion, due to affection of the 8th cervical root and the 1st thoracic root, the hand is weak with no grasp. The deformity is called the claw hand deformity. The patient cannot move his fingers and there will be sensory loss from the medial side of the upper limb. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And do not forget to hit the notification bell so you can know if I upload another video.